Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience while we get everything sorted out. I'm sure the band will tell you about their their journey up here is not quite as uh, as planned, but they're really good at improvising, and so we're really happy they're here. Um, and thank you all for coming out midweek on a Wednesday night. How many people have seen the Bee Eaters before? Wow, that's great. Well, it's interesting because um, we have not presented the Bee Eaters in quite a few years. I mean, certainly since pre-pandemic, um, but they are one of the first um, groups that we hosted, like. I don't know, it was 14, 13, 14 years ago? A long time ago, yeah. And like, it's in the dark past. It's <laughs> uh, um, amazing. And then we've hosted you many times, you know, over the years, but in, in many different configurations, because as you know, these musicians, they play with and collaborate with lots of different groups. So, um, they are here playing a program um, that they have devised, um, centered around the composer Bach, and they're going to play it in their own style. So I'm super excited to hear their music. And um, so, how many people have never been here before? Just curious. There. All right. Thanks for coming out, and um, and I hope you come back. And also, we have a live audience online. So I don't know how many of you know we live stream our shows. And um, so I'm going to welcome those folks. Hi, mom. <laughs> and I do know other people are watching too. So thank you for tuning in. Um, and. Uh, yeah. Um, is there anything, any questions? I think I talked to a few of you saying we're going to do one longer set with a stretch break. How does that sound? Um, yeah, so if you need to get up and use a restroom, don't hesitate. Um, anyway, just wanted to uh, welcome you all. And um, without further ado, let's welcome the Bee Eaters. <laughs> well, it's very nice to be back. As Abby said, we are playing a lot of music by J.S. Bach, and also a few of our own tunes and other things that seem, I don't know, that feel related somehow to the music of J.S. Bach. And yeah, we figure we start with a few <coughs> of these two-part invention system, kind of some of the happy sounding ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the happy sounding ones. Yeah, the C major, the F major, the E major. Two part inventions. So I'll be playing the left hand and Simon will be playing the right hand. Yeah. And I think he wrote these as like little exercises for his students, right? That's what I heard. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. You know, involved enough, but um, yeah, just short little snippets. <laughs> trad music, it's like, mm. I'm standing here and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, like, you get into the middle of one of these pieces and it's just like, everything's moving. Yeah. And just like, at least the way that we mostly play these things, which is like, like a fiddle tune. We're not like slowing down, it's like, I don't know all the things, I don't even know what classical music people would call that, where the, the phrasing kind of does this like a way, like an ocean. It's like, I don't know, at least when I play Bach, it's kind of like, it's like a fiddle tune. So I'm like in the middle of it, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, wish me luck. So, yeah, we, I guess we end up doing more of it with crescendoing and decrescendoing, as, as opposed to doing it, you know, sometimes that goes hand in hand with the rhythm, speeding up and right. slowing down. Different ways of phrasing. The, you can still, the dynamics can do that without the rhythm actually changing. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go.
third bee eater, my sister Tashina.
are you guys tonight? Yeah. Cool. We had some excitement with our trailer oh. on the way yeah. down here. Was blown, it? Blown tire. Oh, oh girls. Girls. It wasn't really enthusiastic excitement, it was just sort of surprising excitement. <laughs> um, <coughs> screws and tires don't go well together. No. Oh. No. <laughs> Do not. We made it. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, some of what we'll play is um, solo, some of the solo violin repertoire, but not necessarily played solo. Um, and this is a couple movements of the D minor partita. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You put the violin resin on the cello. I had the cello rosin. This one says cello. Yeah. Well, this one's also cello. This is cello uh, dark, and that's cello, cello light. Cello dark and cello ah, light. Ah, you put the yes. cello light on the violin. <laughs> no. Uh, if I can't find my violin rosin, then I'll put the cello. Yeah. Uh, How is it? I have it too. This is some of our favorite rosin from Greece, I think, is where it's made. What's the difference between cool. dark and light? Um, the dark is stickier. The lot yeah. stickier. Yeah, but so I, I've had dark and light violin rosin, so I'm curious how sticky the light cello rosin is, because cello rosin is stickier than violin, and bass rosin is the stickiest of all. Yeah, it'll actually kind of melt and pour out sometimes. And one time when we were backpacking and we hadn't remembered to bring any rosin, <laughs> we used sap from a tree, and that was pretty much just like bass rosin. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It was the stickiest of all. Yeah, it was the stickiest of all for sure. It was dry, you know, it wasn't it was a little brittle. flowing, um, but it was, yeah, yeah. just kind of scraped. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually Basically. it was not quite as <laughs> soft as the bass rosin. Bass rosin is like on a hot day, it'll start to like pour to the other side of the container. Um, it's a little too much for the violin. <laughs> um, so, we do those D minor ones? Sure, yeah. And I will do my best to um, kind of follow along with the piece and outline the chords with just playing bass line, counterpoint, um, improvising what I can around it, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> and Tristina will play what Bach actually wrote, and it'll be there. Try. I'll try. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I'll do my best. <laughs> the D minor allemande no and then the jig. Which is essentially a jig.
I forgot where that part went. Okay. Ready.
Good dad, job, dad is on his way with the vehicle with the fixed tire at the moment. So. <laughs> there would be um, somebody very familiar to hang out with. You're doing a good job with Betsy. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Sit with Betsy. We go way back now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was fun. Yeah. We played a couple things not not written by Bach, but but inspired. Somehow related. Yeah. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably, probably fairly directly in this case, I'm guessing. But Quarterly, yeah. I guess. Yeah, certainly harmonically. This Any is... questions? <laughs> you guys doing okay? Any questions yeah. or concerns? <laughs> <laughs> you just may recognize this one, and then we'll play a we'll play a Beat Eaters, older Beat Eaters original after this. the five string fiddle. The other one doesn't have a name. Feel free to try. <laughs> try to find the right thing to suit it. Oh. One, two, one, two, three. Thank you. 
turn the, the, the lead Bach melody lines over to Simon for these. Um, <laughs> yeah. We might take our stretch break after we do these two, I think. Let's do that, yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourselves, or where you trained, or what the history is. Sure, yeah. Uh, I guess. Um, Toshina and I grew up in Northern California. We grew up playing... <coughs> Um, a lot of Texas fiddling and a lot of Bach and you know other Baroque, some more modern classical things, but more more Baroque and <laughs> going to fiddle camps and you know playing a lot of trad styles that we encountered at the camps, I guess. <coughs> um, 
Like after a while, we eventually ended up mostly playing concerts. Um, like we were like not quite old enough for to say that you have like a career. You know, we were teenagers or whatever. But we would get hired to play concerts, and so you know we kept up with that rather than choosing a different thing. I guess you know because we were already doing it and, it, and we loved it. But yeah, um, that was. But we ended up playing education. more folk music. Primarily because of the kind of environment, because we love these kind of settings, um, and we didn't encounter them in, in, in like in the vein of classical music that um, we had just been like that was what we were exposed to, and we thought, okay, well, folk musicians are over here and they're playing the house concerts and they're like hanging out with the audience afterwards and jamming and playing tunes and. There wasn't lots of orchestra camps. Though. It wasn't happening <laughs> in the <laughs> classical settings. Or the chamber you know, music I mean, camps. Yeah, and yeah. It, but there's some wonderful, wonderful things that we got to experience. But those people would say. You play your music, you play your instrument after you're done? Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and, and so, so we kind of gravitated that way. And then as some time went by, we, we thought about how much time we'd spent playing classical music, playing Bach. Um, like, you know, half the time we were studying when we were growing up, we thought, that's really wonderful music. And we didn't kind of move away from that because we didn't love the music. It was just a different right. scene, you know? And um, yeah. so that's how we come to be here doing this and mm. a little bit of our story. Yeah, met met Simon in 2006, I think. Yeah. Just in time. Yeah. At a house concert, time. actually. Yeah, at a house concert. Yeah. At a friend's place. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, friends, and friends. Yeah. And yeah, I just grew up playing this thing um, from when I was 10, just playing fiddle tunes. And yeah. It, I don't know. How did you find your love for that particular instrument, which is very I, yeah, I've always loved percussion, and I think, I mean, I think it, I blame Seattle. It was just, they were around, you know, Dusty Strings is there, you got this one, Rick Fogel, uh -huh. he lives there also, in the Folk Life Festival, and I don't know, yeah, I know one other person uh, who's played here, actually, Marina Alvaro, great Hamilton player, amazing, and also amazing jazz pianist. Um, mm -hmm. Who also plays Dolls from because of Seattle. <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah, Seattle. And yeah, I didn't. I, didn't, I think the first time I ever played any Bach was with you guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Over the past, I don't know. Yeah. Probably throughout the past ten years, exploring it a little bit. Yeah. But little bits yeah. here and there. Oh yeah, I had to learn one of these next pieces actually for us. Uh, Another band that I play with was playing a, a Bach tribute show, and we all had to play a solo piece, and this was just the one that I ended up picking. <clears throat> we probably picked for me, actually, because I, I really don't know the repertoire at all. And it's really beautiful and amazing, and it's so cool to get to know it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, the Largo and the Allegro Asai from the C major sonata for solo violin.
Share music in this room. Yeah. Okay, a little little stretch break. <laughs> we'll have some more.
Ready for more more music? Yeah. Cool. Let's start with a, a tune that that's a tune that Simon wrote. <laughs> that note's in there. That note's in there a lot. It's one that Simon wrote that we put on the the second Bee Eaters record. She wants um, to say enough. Which we do, um, we do have a few copies of. If anyone still listens to physical CDs, um, we do have a few copies. Hey, of we have we'll cassettes in Simon's car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're listening to Bonnie Raitt on cassette this afternoon. That's oh, great. That sounds so good. Like yeah. I brought. Yeah. yeah. And this is the tune that goes with a kid's story that I wrote called "Ouch, I'm Being Eaten by a Leopard." Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. It's a very good story. Tell the story too? Uh, if I could remember it, I would tell it, but I, I don't think I could. 
It's but in the CD, right? It's printed in the CD booklet, so right. that's another perk of the CD. Yeah, it's a kid story for adults.
shall not be on this one. Um, but where's this one going? Well, then we're gonna play the E minor. Back to a little bit of Bach.
Are you and Simon playing part of the D minor now? Yeah. We're going to play the first the first violin partita, um, which is one of my very, very favorite pieces of music. Um, the first violin partita in B minor. And um, one of the reasons I like it so much is there's four movements and each one has a double. And that's the same, the same structure, the same chord progression. Essentially, it's the same melody with twice as many notes filled in, <laughs> as some of you know. Um, and so you get to hear a, another version of how Bach would have thought about that, that piece and that harmony. Um, so we thought it'd be fun to play some of those together as a duo with the movement and with the double happening simultaneously. So you can kind of hear them as some kind of crazy counterpoint to each other. <laughs> um, and it's, it's rhythmically interesting. So. Um, so I'll play the first couple and then Simon and I will play the, the third and fourth movement together. That's the idea. And we'll see how we do. <laughs> Best laid plans. So here is Violin Partita and B minor.
play something with fewer notes. <laughs> Is that? I don't know. You made them sound awfully sweet. They're good. They're good notes. Though. I like I don't think I'm probably allowed to tell you what the most impressive thing about what Tristan just did is, but it always blows me away. Wait, what is? You're not allowed to tell us what the most impressive thing well, about it is? I mean, it's going to sound really bad. <laughs> oh, wow. Now we really Say it now. Now, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm curious. Well, yeah. You have no idea how incredibly unprepared Tristan is. <laughs> he's been doing everything except for playing the violin lately. Yeah. And he's he's able to do this. There just, might be some some signs of that. You just, guys probably do know. Just listen. <laughs> he just listens to this stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, I can probably play that." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. <clears throat> I've listened a lot to that piece. It never gets old. I could do that too, and I would not be playing it. <laughs> <laughs> also, it was not written for Dulcimer, but that's true. Well, I know what Bach was thinking. Yeah, he should have. The Dulcimer painting. All right. <laughs> See if we can sneak in the little George Martin double speed box box style um, counterpoint. Yeah. In the of it. Some people play it.
so that's so good. <laughs> I know, I can't really like see that pencil writing either. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Simon. Yay, Simon. Is this Jeek in Preludio or just Preludio? Oh. Or Preludio and then Jeek. Preludio and then... Maybe Jeek. Yeah. Prelude. I mean, the prelude has to start and then... Probably. If we want to do Jeek. That sounds great. Feel it up. How are you guys doing? Good. If anybody needs to work in the morning, don't... Don't uh, feel bad about going home. We, we won't take it personally. <laughs> but we'll, maybe we'll play a couple more. And um, this is the uh, Preludio, which opens Partita number three in E major, first mm -hmm. violin, and possibly the Gig at the end of it. I feel like the Preludio is like the whiskey before breakfast of the Bach Partitas. <laughs> it's like everybody knows it. If you're going to know one, right, right. Know it. I don't know. It is. It. Yeah, something. but you know the, the question. It's a little hard for this to get breakfast, though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Unless you ask Chris House. Right. 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 A friend of ours used to come and stay at our place when he was teaching jazz at Berkeley School of Music, and he's one of the most incredible jazz violinists. Um, or just jazz musicians that I've met. You know, he's just yeah. like absolutely astounding and brilliant. And he just yeah. thought whiskey before oh, breakfast, this little tune. Papa! were just so obvious he thought it was just really hard to improvise over <laughs> so that was the hardest fiddle tune he'd ever encountered <laughs> anyway i think this one is hard but it's very fun to play. Yeah. it's a little bit longer than the others <laughs>
Maybe we should have a song, because that's something we all do, is a bit of singing. It's not yeah. the main thing we do, but um, this is a song which you could say, well, you could say it was written by a number of people, and one of them was J.S. Bach. Um, there have been a few takes on it. Um, the song part was written by Paul Simon, and it's the song American Tune. Some of you might know. And the music was written by Bach, but that was based on a hymn. That was, I think, fifteen, 1590s. Um, and I think I read somewhere that that was also, that hymn was based on an older hymn. And who knows before that, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, Pop song. if, it went further, <laughs> yeah. if it went further back. Folk song, pop song, you know, yeah, right. all of it. So um, we will do our best to explore this melody and, and these words and leave you with that. You know, you're supposed to end a show with something fast and showy and so we thought we'd end it with a slow song if, if you guys are okay with that. <laughs> have plenty of notes. Yeah, and thank you so much to Abby. Thank you, Abby. Yeah. Yeah. Getting our Thank you here. for coming out midweek. Um, so great yeah, to have yeah. you all here, and what an amazing opportunity to hear you all play this fabulous music. I'm just the more you play, the more I want to hear. I'm just like <laughs> an all nighter. I'm just totally into this book well, now. I just want to hear it. Well, I can see why you get addicted. Though. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Really yes. This is a this is a special thing you all have here. So. Before we start this, how much of those last, like the last couple of pieces that we played, how much of that did you work out in advance and how much was like in the moment? Yeah, seriously. For, for your part. I guess the thinking through the chords, some of that happens hopefully in advance. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's no, hard to do. Yeah, no, but that's knowing the chord structure, right. but, but you don't like conscript any of that really too much, do you? I don't think so. There's, sometimes there's things that tend to come out the same when I think about those chords as they're going by, but no, sure, it's not. Yeah. It's not, quite nice. Not mm -hmm. worked out, and sometimes you find yourself in a pickle. You're like, wait, <laughs> how do I get out of the room? And then he tricks you, and then you're somewhere else, and like, wait, we're in F sharp major. Oh, no. <laughs> but <laughs> Bob's so predictable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, yes. no, 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 sorry. Yes and no, right? Yes and but, no, exactly. He's predictably unpredictable. The funny thing yeah. is I have heard that, I've heard that said many different ways um, by um, some old-time musicians we know who have said, oh, but Bach's so predictable. And it made me think of all, all kinds of music that you might encounter. Someone who doesn't know them. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's them and they, they hear the overall shape and like these Irish tunes are all the same tune, right? Mm. Yeah. Not, not if you play Irish music, they're not. <laughs> and not if you're trying to actually play the melody, they're not the same tune. But, um, but the, you know, there's a language, there's a vocabulary that he's using. And there's a lot of that happening, but it's... Um, yeah, I feel like anybody who says that's predictable has never tried to play chords along with one of those pieces. <laughs> I mean, Bob Dylan's predictable, right? Yeah. <laughs> it would be awesome. That's what I So. Predictably unpredictable is what was going through my head. You know, you're just going to think of something that. Yeah, it, go will, it will surprise you, predictably. Good <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> job.
sing an American tune. Oh, but it's alright. It's alright. Right. It can't be forever. Still, tomorrow's gonna be another world. I'm trying to get some rest. That's all.